Welcome to Truth Sentinel, watching over the truth in the news. Today's date is the 31st of July 2014. A warm welcome to um, all listeners. Thanks for your support. Um, as, as always, I appreciate it. Currently in London, um, thinking of heading to Ukraine and then to Thailand later. Who knows where I'll end up? I mean, um, I have, haven't decided where to go exactly, uh, leaving my plans open at the moment. Today's news, um, let's just go through some of the things I've noticed in the news, in the mainstream news. US House of Representatives has passed a resolution to sue Barack Obama for allegedly exceeding his constitutional powers. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how that goes, that's very interesting. Good to see someone's um, trying to um, keep him on his toes anyway. Um, in London, in England, uh, up to about 150 people are going to be taking part in trials of making people who've been involved in any kind of offences related to alcohol, they're going to have to wear tags where they're going to be monitored as to their consumption. Um, I just thought it was interesting, you know, I mean, how long is it going to be before we're all going to be wearing tags or some kind of chip and it's going to be monitoring us for our drink intake, food intake, drugs intake with, you know, obviously ID as well. Um, I don't know if I mentioned already, but when I landed at the airport in London, um, I was, my face or eye was scanned and I was uh, basically, it was much faster. So, I mean, there are some benefits to it. I was, I was able to go through the airport within about a few minutes if I was going to go through this machine. Um, and I think that's what's going to tempt people to take part in all this and accept all this technology is that it's going to make people's lives easier. Um, personally, I'll accept it to a certain point, but I, you know, when it comes to having a microchip under the skin, I think that's where I'm going to draw the line. I'm not going to take that. Um, let me know how you feel about that. Do you feel like this technology is in inevitable? You know, um, chips under the skin? Or um, are you going to put up a um, some kind of fight before you have to take it? Um, I reckon it's, you know, it's probably going to happen within the next 15, 20 years anyway, maybe sooner, who knows. It depends what happens in the world, you know, they can rush these things in. If, if, there's, if there's a world war, for example, which it does seem to be heading that way, if World War Three, depending on how long it lasts, after every war, society changes and they can bring in all kinds of things. Anyway, let me, sorry, I'm, I am deviating from the news slightly here. Um, Driverless cars are coming to the streets of the UK in less than six months. Um, so, you know, people will be able to get driverless taxis before long. Uh, and they'll be able to get a driverless taxi to the supermarket and then um, get served by a, a computer, which we, we have, um, maybe you have them in the States, I'm sure you probably have. Um, so a lot of cashiers have disappeared from the supermarkets and have been replaced with um, computers where you can uh, just check through the food yourself and then walk away. Okay, women across Turkey are posting photos of themselves laughing and smiling on social media because uh, Turkey's Deputy Prime Minister um, talked about moral corruption in a speech and was said basically that women were not uh, supposed to laugh in public. Of course, this prompted a huge backlash from women on social media in Turkey with thousands posting photos of themselves laughing and smiling. It's great how people in Turkey are responding to this ridiculous government that are trying to control people. I mean, it's great. And I can completely understand why there's revolutions over there and, and they're fighting because you can't control people in this way. You can't tell people when they're going to laugh and when they're not. It's ridiculous. Um, okay, I mean, I mean, some of them basically said the government should be focusing on issues like rape and domestic violence, violence and marriage of girls at a young age rather than women laughing in public. Um, militant Islamists in Somalia have shot dead a Muslim woman for refusing to wear a veil, um, according to her relatives. This nomadic woman was killed outside a hut near the Somali town of Hozingal uh, by gunmen belonging to the Al-Shabaab group. This is according to mainstream media, of course. I'm, I, you know, I do look at mainstream media. It still serves a purpose. Um, there are occasions, many occasions, where it, uh, it's they're obviously lying. But um, I still think we can get some, we can get read between the lines with mainstream media. 
Um, okay, so the Palestinian-Israeli uh, situation has been ongoing and it's been interesting to see how media are reacting to the situation. It used to be that the US were mu very much on the side of uh, Israel and didn't really say many negative things. Um, everything seems to be switching towards uh, against Israel basically, you know, I mean partly because of the amount of deaths. I mean the last count I think was 1200 Palestinians dead and only 50 Israelis because the, they've been intercepting the rockets that have been coming over. My opinion is Hamas is obviously a terrorist group. Um, you know, if they're firing on um, civilians as well, then you know, then they're not much better. But Israel, the Israeli forces, and what they've been doing in this in this bloodshed is just not doing themselves any favour. They're killing lots of people. This is a mess again, and I and I think Israel is going to be coming off much much worse. Um, in another way, and obviously not in the death toll because you know they're much much lower. But I think they're gonna, they're going to lose support. Basically, the U.S. have already come out and condemned their actions. You know, and people who um, uh, of a religious religious persuasion and who read Revelations in the Bible will will be looking at how this is tying in. Basically, I mean, in Revelations, uh, the end times and Armageddon, it talks about the armies of the world surrounding Israel and. Certainly, they're in a position where the countries of the world are turning against them. Okay, um, let's just move on. Uh, Ukraine, the situation ongoing there. Um, they've, uh, the Ukrainians have seat a town near uh, Donetsk as fighting intensifies in the east. Um, Putin has obviously been uh, strongly accused of uh, shooting down or uh, this plane, um, MH17. Personally, um, I think you know there needs to be a full investigation. But can you really trust any investigation these days? I mean, who's going to do the investigation? If the Russians do it, can you trust the results? If uh, Western powers do an investigation, can you trust the results? Not really. Uh, that's why. Um, Information these days are so cloudy and it's difficult to know who to believe. Personally, I'll just tell you my opinion. I don't think Putin had much to do with this. It wouldn't be in his interest. And um, so this could have been an, uh, shot down by the Ukrainians under the um, heavily influenced by Western powers uh, to achieve their ends. And that's quite... Um, that's quite something to say that because I hope it's not true. A lot of a lot of things, you know, speculation and things I say, I hope they're not true. But you know, it's not looking good. Let's let's just say that. Anyway, so things are ongoing in Ukraine. It's still mostly um, happening in the east. Um, so if I do go back, I'll be going back to Odessa and just hoping that things stay okay there. There's been a lot about, I've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's been a lot of viruses in the news. I do sometimes wonder if they're just getting people used to the idea of, of deadly viruses occurring, because I heard about the bubonic plague um, sort of re-emerging uh, in some areas of the Ebola virus uh, in Africa seems to be posing a huge threat. And it's been talked about um, how we need to strengthen the resistance for um, against any viruses and having all the remedies available for the Ebola virus if it comes to the UK. I just I'm always suspicious when they start talking about viruses because you know if you believe that the global elite do want to depopulate the earth, which could well be the case, then a virus and a war seem to be the way that they could do it. You know. Um, uh, talking about the, we're going to be talking about the entertainment industry today. And uh, Rolf Harris, who was a popular entertainer in the UK, um, he's appealed against um, the length of his sentence. And I think other people have appealed appealed against the length of his sentence, saying it was too lenient. He was jailed for five years and nine months for twelve indecent assaults on four girls. And I mean. The child abuse situation in the UK is just getting crazy. I mean, uh, I think it was last month uh, it was revealed that a document had been lost uh, given the names of people in positions of power in the UK. And that was lost and uh, there's going to be an investigation. But that seems to have gone a bit quiet at the moment. I, 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 you know, they always put try to put some distance between 
uh, coming out with the truth, uh, you know, by, by leaving months and months, sometimes years and years, sometimes even decades so that people don't care anymore. But I really hope that some people get justice and that people at the top, you know, it doesn't matter how far it goes, you know, there's talk of former prime ministers being involved in this, in child abuse and um, cabinet ministers and, and things like that, you know. So let's see what happens and let's hope that whoever has taken part in this is brought to justice. Also in the entertainment uh, world uh, news, Drew Barrymore's half-sister was found dead slumped in her car with some pills nearby. And we're going to be talking about a lot of cases like that later on in the, today's program. Today's program is celebrity deaths, the entertainment industry. Um, it's going to be the main theme anyway. And uh, if we stick with the entertainment industry, Paramount Pictures has apologised over a teenage uh, mutant Ninja Turtle poster that accidentally referenced 9-11 terrorist attacks. It's got some teen, teenage mutant Ninja Turtles falling out of a building that's on fire and crumbling down. And the release date was September the 11th. So that wasn't really a very wise poster to make. Um, David Duchovny is becoming quite popular in Russia because of a, um, an advert for a Russian drinks company that celebrates the country's national identity by commenting on his Russian roots and um, sort of looking at how life may have been for him if he'd grown up in Russia. So uh, his name is trending in Russia, but um, since all the since the trending of his name, he's since found out he's actually Ukrainian rather than Russian which uh, is quite topical. Um, lawyers acting for a man who claims he was sexually abused by X-Men director Brian Singer have asked to withdraw the case. Uh, this was uh, Jack, uh, sorry, Jeff Herman and Mark Gallagher who'd filed a court motion saying they no longer wanted to represent Michael Egan uh, because of their relationship had broken down. Mr. Egan was a former child model and aspiring actor who's now alleging that he was lured into a sex ring at parties at which Mr. Singer was present. Now, last episode, we had the second part of our discussion with Laurie and Fenton about super soldiers and mind control. Today, we're going to be talking about celebrity deaths, control of the entertainment industry, which also, you know, mind control is part of that as well. I mean, if you think about the Disney sort of mind control, um, also, we're very fortunate to have a Hollywood actor with us today as well. So first of all, I'm going to talk to one of our Truth Sentinel researchers. And we're just going to have a chat about um, the, the topic of celebrity deaths. And just as an introduction to the topic, just talk about, you know, our, our current knowledge of some of the deaths that have occurred. And then we're going to go over to our Hollywood actor, who I'll introduce later and uh, he can give us some background information as to what it was like working at Hollywood and uh, how he has become a targeted individual for not following the rules and not doing as he's told. Okay, so first of all, let's go over to Ron, one of our Truth Sentinel researchers, and let's have a chat with him about um, some of the celebrity deaths that have occurred over the years. Yeah, there's been an alarming amount of deaths uh, in the entertainment industry and amongst celebrities. Uh, for example, more recently, Peaches Geldof from the UK, Amy Winehouse, you know, Lady Diana, James Dean, Natalie Wood. There's a long, long list. I'm joined here with by one of Truth Sentinel's researchers uh, called Ron. Ron, can you think of, uh, have you come across any other names that have uh, caught your interest? Hi Scott. Um, yeah, well, there's there's plenty. I mean, spanning back a number of years. Um, for example, more recently, Brittany Murphy. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of her, her case and her husband as well. Yeah, they um, died in mysterious circumstances. I think uh, the more recent articles I've read say they potentially were poisoned. Yes. Uh, well, she certainly was. I'm not sure if he. I think he was poisoned in the same way um, a number of week, weeks later. Um, but that's quite. A, quite an in-depth story you might want to go into. We'll definitely try and come over to that one in a minute while. Um, also, Brandon Lee, Bruce Lee, father and son, you know, obviously um, some mysterious circumstances, in fact, that there was a gun which sh we shouldn't have a real bullet in, which was uh, used on set. Which you'd think they would have might have checked. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, there's There was Aaliyah, do you remember Aaliyah, that, that up-and-coming singer? Yeah, she died in a cr plane crash. Um, I'm not sure of the 
exact circumstances, but um, she was very young. Um, but definitely in terms of conspiracy, there's people such as Kurt Cobain, um, the in, reggae artist Bob Marley, Pete Tosh, um, and you go back to John Lennon as well, and Jimi Hendrix, and as you could talk for a number of hours about all the different... You could indeed, and we're, we're only going to just basically um, skirt over the topic today, we're just introducing the topic and maybe we'll get a guest to come on and go into more detail, so we're just going to uh, talk about, you know, people like we've already mentioned, also say Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, Paul Walker of Fast and Furious, James uh, Gandolfini, Corey Monteith from Glee. Yeah, there's so many celebrities um, who've died from either drug-related or suicides or uh, seemingly a larger amount than you would have thought. Just personally, I think the probability-wise, it, it just seems like an unnatural amount in one industry. Um, that have died, and some of them under suspicious circumstances. So we're going to have a look at those today. We're just going to brainstorm the topic. Um, now, one topic that seems to be linked to this is um, Operation Mockingbird. What do you think the link is? Well, basically, um, Operation Mockingbird was something which was created in the 1950s by the CIA in America. Um, and we can there's a Wikipedia reference you can look up. Um, which is how I found out most of my information about it, but basically they realised that the entertainment industry, which really came to fruition in the 1950s after World War II, um, was a great way of being able to sort of, uh, influence people um, on a mass sort of scale. Um, and they could inf you know, infiltrate various areas of the uh, sort of society and um, do whatever objective that's been laid out um, by their superiors. Yeah, one of the superiors was Cord Meyer, who was uh, apparently in, in charge of um, Operation Mockingbird initially, and it was overtaken in 1953 by Alan Dulles, director of the CIA. Well, yes, um, basically they've admitted that they have infiltrated areas of society, um, but could have continued and probably has continued till this day. I'm sure it's continuing um, to this day. And like a number of things, you can see the foundations of various sort of, uh, government programs, but you don't know what where they might be now because of the age of technology that we're in. Exactly. I'm sure we'll find out in, in maybe 20 or 30 years what they've been up to. Exactly. Um, but uh, basically, this clearly laid out the fact that the government were interested in what celebrities as such we consider do, because celebrities are people who... You know, musicians or actors, or even to extent we have sadly now politicians, but and people like that, but people who are famous in the public eye, a lot of the public will listen to and can hang on their every word, depending on how you, you know, deal with it. People like John Lennon spoke out, you know, advocates of uh, peace and didn't want violence, um, and people like that can, you know, give a voice to a lot of people who agreed with them. Whereas, Indeed, it does seem like if you if you uh, just do as you're told and keep your head down, things are going to be okay. But any celebrity who has a lot of influence and then starts getting involved in politics could find themselves in trouble. Yeah, well, I believe there's been a, a definite attempt to dumb down people um, via the media and to get people obsessed with celebrities like they're gods. Um, and not to really care much about much else. They do. For some people, they do. They are like gods. I mean, if you look at um, some of the more obsessed fans of celebrities, it does. To me, I can't quite understand where they're coming from. You know, they're screaming. They're waiting for them outside their houses. It's not healthy, you know, that's for sure. But yeah, they are. It's almost because they are. They're filling a, a hole in that person's life. They need something to worship, maybe. And so they've chosen a certain celebrity. Well, exactly. I mean, um, a lot of people's lives aren't particularly great at the moment because, of, you know, for what hasn't been for a while, there's not a lot of money around and there's a lot of corruption and I'll get into great details about that. But people latch on to um, other people's lives through entertainment and, you know, almost, you know some, a lot of people wish they were them and aspire to be them and have the dream to become a celebrity too. Well, yeah, and people talk about role models, and uh, 
they sort of um, criticize a celebrity if they're not doing something which they think is good for a role model to do. I mean, I, I mean, they haven't really asked to, to be in that situation, but a lot of them, well, some of them did want to become famous. These days, it seems like that seems to be the goal. It's not whether you've got a talent, it's whether it's just becoming fake, famous for the sake of it. Well, yeah, there's this um, seemingly unhealthy craving for fame that uh, too many people have. It is. I mean, some of the uh, celebrities who have been murdered were murdered by people who wanted fame, and I'm thinking of uh, John Lennon again. Mark Chapman, he's actually said that um, one of the reasons he did it was because he wanted the notoriety. Plus, well, going back to what we were saying about the government, though, um, you you know you can create this kind of monster, and then if somebody is actually in control of it to an extent, they can use it to you know have the voice that someone like John Lennon used to or Bob Marley, and um, use it to whatever they want. And from what I see, the the voice is to promote greed, materialism. And just a lot of vanity um, in the entertainment industry. Yeah, that's true. I mean, there seem to be some sort of um, celebrities that have maybe come from reality shows like Big Brother and that, that maybe don't have any particular political views. And because younger people copy them, it seems the things that they're trying to emulate are things like, you know, wearing fake tan, focusing on makeup, you know, just basically things that aren't that important. In life. Well, exactly. Reality, reality TV has uh, come a long way since Big Brother first came on the scene. Let's move on to our first uh, celebrity we wanted to talk about, mostly because it's in the UK, so we know a bit more about it, and because um, it's current, basically. Peaches Geldof. Yeah. Allegedly died of a drugs overdose. They're looking for a drug dealer who they reckon might have supplied the heroin. What do you know about Peaches Gildoff uh, case, anyway? Well, I mean, um, I didn't know that much about her other than that she was she'd been in the public eye a bit, obviously for being Bob's daughter. Sorry, Sir Bob, I should be saying. I saw her uh, argument she had with Katie Hopkins. If you're aware of her, yeah, I saw that um, <coughs> on this morning. I they were talking about um, parenting, a type of parenting called attachment parenting, which Peaches mentioned was basically where the mother responds to the child's needs. Like if the child cries, then they try to get there as quickly as possible and, and tend to the child. If they go to sleep at night, the child often um, sleeps on the same bed. Um, it just seems to be basically what I always thought normal parenting was. Um, so there was a debate as to whether it was a bit new age, but um, it all seemed fairly normal to me, like breastfeeding. It promotes breastfeeding and things like that. Yeah, well, exactly. I thought she she seemed like a pretty well well rounded individual. Um, she seemed to really care about her kids. So it seemed to be the most important thing to her. What was the conspiracy around her death? Would you well, say? Yeah, basically, the reason I mentioned this um, is the fact that she seemed pretty much with it. She didn't seem like someone who was actually struggling with a heroin addiction. Um, you know, obviously, there was she did have a past with it, which is well documented. Um, but she seemed like pretty focused on her life and her kids, and then only a short amount of time later, she's found in the state she was in, supposedly having taken, which we can go to in a second, but it was 60% pure heroin, which is 40% stronger than your average on the street. Perfect if um, you wanted someone to take an overdose, or if you wanted to take an overdose yourself. But well, apparently there's a gang being being searched for who are uh, related to stalking celebrities and trying to get them to take really powerful drugs but it doesn't really quite make sense to me what how it would help or make money for them by killing something if you're going to give oh, such a high dose it's going to be a danger isn't it so it seems to me like they're more trying to kill somebody rather than uh, but who knows there definitely seem to be something suspicious yeah douglas dietrich mentioned about the cult that she belonged to or, or organization should i say um she had oto tattooed on her body, which um, a lot of people are saying are basically the Illuminati, or they're the, the new organisation of choice or religion of choice for celebrities these days. Yes, well, um, look on the internet quite easily, the amount of uh, symbology of uh, you know, Freemasons and Illuminati and all sorts of different cults spread throughout yeah, the entertainment industry, really. OTO, I, I believe, of, you know, they are related to 
Aris Crowley, and they also worship kind of similar, have similar beliefs to uh, the Knights Templar predecessors to them, which are an ancient order, and they are a secret society who have, you know, one of their oaths is to not tell anybody their secrets, um, as often they obviously it's their secret society. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually called Ordo Templi Orientis, which is the um, Order of the Templar of the East, or Order of Oriental Templars. So it has got links to the Masons as well. It's been related to Satanism through the fact that, um, well, one of the facts I know of the um, one of their deities is Baphomet, who is the goat is related to Satanism. Mm. The, Satan, you know, the Church of Satan apparently took that image on, but certainly there's a, there's a link to Alistair Crowley, um, who he's a very controversial figure. Um, he's been involved in um, all sorts of conspiracy theories. You can see it was plenty of references to well, satanic imagery and references to Satanism um, in some of his books, but then also there's also the opposite as well, and some people believe there's a, yeah, a lot of hidden agenda, a lot of misdirection as to what a lot of these cults actually do. Um, well, half the time that's the problem, nobody quite knows because you, you don't really know until you join. Now let's, let's move on to another um, UK uh, singer, Amy Winehouse. There weren't that many people who were shocked when she died in uh, July 2011. She was found dead in her London home. I mean, everyone knew she had a problem with alcohol and drugs. But doesn't that often seem to be the case, that if people did want to bump these celebrities off, it'd be quite easy if they're already known to be addicted to alcohol and drugs. I mean, all you need to do is leave a bottle beside their bed and well, everyone accepts it as truth. Well, just from the previous case I mentioned there, there, there was an admittance that there might be groups going after celebrities purposely to get them addicted to uh, certain drugs or whatever and, and to get money from them and, you know, extort them, basically. Um, and to, but to what level that could go, um, you know, who knows. She was 27 as well, so she joins the, um, the group of 27 who've, of celebrities who die at, the, at that particular age. Well, that's, that's another conspiracy entirely. Uh, well, some people say it's ridiculous, but uh, a number of well-known, mostly musicians, I believe, died at the age of 27. Um, but then people claim that those musicians died at the age of 28, etc. So um, I'm not sure about that one so much. And also, um, a lot of uh, celebrities actually seem to be involved in photo shoots that depict their own death. I mean, there was... Kurt Cobain, there was a photo of him with a gun in his mouth. Uh, Amy, Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. Yeah, I saw an image of her lying on the floor with her blood coming out of her. Some photo shoot. Yeah, and other, others I've heard <coughs> mention of Tupac Heath Le and Heath Ledger as well. And um, Brittany Murphy, um, who we'll talk about as well. well in fact, let's, let's move on to Brittany Murphy now. What, what do you know about the Brittany Murphy case? Well, that's, um, that's a very strange one. Certainly, um, but there is a there is a strong conspiracy theory um, around the fact that also her husband died in the same kind of way um, in the same house, and um, her own father has uh, claimed that the government uh, poisoned her and her husband in revenge for supporting a whistleblower. I'm not sure if you're aware of this story. Yeah, wasn't that Julia Davis who was um, who worked for Border Control? And she claimed that they were letting in terrorists across the Mexican border and that there was some concern that um, Islamist terrorists could get in as well. And she was trying to raise this with her bosses and was getting nowhere. And I think um, Brittany Murphy was uh, was supporting her, basically. And I, th I heard there was an incident where Black Hawk helicopters were involved. Well, yeah, I've seen an, um, a, an interview with Julia Davis who has basically said that she thinks Brittany Murphy and her husband were killed for supporting her and that she was followed around um, everywhere by the government and uh, that's why she believes um, these people were killed. Yeah, even, even a family member uh, said that you just don't have two people die like that under uh, those circumstances. They were both young. Uh, Brittany, Murphy, Brittany Murphy died suddenly in the bathroom of her house um, and wasn't there also another person, a friend of Brittany Murphy, called Sky Bartosiak, the 21-year-old yes, actress? Yes, that's right. Well, she, I know that they appeared in the same film together not, um, a couple of times. Um, I'm not sure how much friends they were, but um, 
she's I believe strangely died recently um, inexplicably she was found in a room um, there's no reason has been given yet she's found in her bedroom um, her mother says she never did drugs um, and she just can't understand what's happened and um, but she died on the same day of the Brittany Murphy's death inquiry closed I believe and, and a bizarre coincidence could be a coincidence let's move on to um, David Carradine now, um, David Carradine was found June the 4th, 2009, found dead in a hotel room in Bangkok, Thailand, where he was shooting his latest film. Now, do you know anything about that case? Well, uh, he died in bizarre circumstances, I believe. Um, some kind of, similar to Michael Hutchinson, wasn't it? But, um, That's but right, yeah. Some kind of strange strangulation, sexual... So erotic asphyxiation, I think, is the technical yeah, term. <laughs> which, yeah, Michael Hutchins um, was supposed to have died of as well. Um, Paula Yates, I think, was a drugs overdose I mentioned before. Oh yeah, I mean that obviously goes back to yeah, in terms of David Carradine. But there's some story that he was looking into some secret society himself. Um, yeah, yeah, he, arts. yeah, apparently martial arts secret societies. And uh, Carradine's agent said um, he believed that uh, David Carradine had been murdered. So, you know, if people close uh, to these people, like family members and agents, are saying it, then you've got to wonder whether there's something going on. You know, foul play may be involved. Yeah, definitely. I find it strange myself. Let's move on to Heath Ledger. Um, I mean, his is a classic case, again, where I think if people have a known drug problem found with a bottle of pills next to him, which just seems to me, if you wanted to kill someone and then just make it look like they commit suicide, especially a celebrity, you just need to leave a bottle of pills next to them. It's often strange as well that um, people at the height of their career to do something like that. You know, he's just, uh, he was playing the Joker and the Batman and um, he's considered a very good actor. Um, yeah, that was in The Dark Knight, which is also um, subject to some well, conspiracies. There's a lot of conspiracy involved with that film. I mean... Um, Sandy Hook. Sandy um, Hook's linked to it because a part of the movie, The Dark Knight, I think it's on a map, and the cinema shooting where uh, people were killed and that people say that there was more than one shooter involved. But, and the, the guy that did it, James the, Holmes, he, um, he seems the uh, perfect sort of mind control victim. He, you know, if you looked at him his trial, he seemed clearly completely out of it. Whether he was on drugs, I don't know. No, definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, MK Ultra, um, the whole mind control aspect of uh, that was part of this Operation Mockingbird, I believe. I mean, in my opinion, I think this would have been used uh, to a certain extent. They could stop people being troublesome, or they could use people and use, you know. I mean, this guy from the cinema shooting, he disappeared, um, he disappeared for a couple of years, I believe, before... Uh, yeah, that's often the case. He did this. Uh, so. Same as Adam Lanza, sort of a period of their life when nobody's quite sure what they're up to, and then uh, later on they, they, they take part in an atrocity. Anyway, um, Heath Ledger, apparently no prescription was written by his doctors, but he was found with these pills and was uh, let alone when he died. I mean... Who knows what really happened to him? We're just saying, you know, could he be one of these people that the Illuminati, OTO, or whoever you want to say is in control may have decided that he was doing something they weren't happy with, or he wasn't wasn't being obedient. Another one uh, would be Whitney Houston. She died um, apparently in a hotel a bathtub uh, on February eleventh, two thousand and twelve. What do you know about her? Well, I mean, initially everyone just heard that she had dr drowned, I believe. She drowned in a bathtub. That's right, yeah. a bit strange, naturally. Drowned so. in a bathtub, which is apparently the heat was, um, the heat of the water would have would have burned her skin. That's what I heard, anyway. That's right, and um, there's, the fact of the matter is, it's another one of those celebrity deaths where it doesn't seem clean cut in the way it comes out of the news. Um, there seems to be... You're almost left with some you know, suspicious feeling, but there's nothing quite, you know, I mean, there's this, this alleged uh, water issue. But some people say um, that she and uh, some others of these celebrities that die in slightly suspicious circumstances are actually sacrifices. Well, this is, this is a theory I've read about. Um, there's a lot of uh, Illuminati, you know, important numbers, numerology, involved with uh, rituals. Um, 
They're mostly odd numbers, aren't they? Yeah. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Well, nine, eleven, uh, seven, nine, eleven, and uh, thirteen. Yeah. She died on February the eleventh. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I, I'm not a big uh, someone who's big into these numbers, although I do think dates uh, dates are, massive... are important because they some of them do seem to tie up with satanic ritual dates or. You know, stuff like the summer solstice and things yeah, you, like that. You can find a list on the internet if you look quite easily, um, which just lists a whole load of dates linking different celebrity deaths and, uh, and to do with different yeah, solstice, solstice and uh, various other planets aligning. And uh, yeah, So there's a little project for anyone out there who wants to uh, look at satanic um, dates and compare them to the deaths of celebrities and see if there's any um, patterns there. Well that's the problem with this, the whole subject of celebrity deaths. Um, there's a, definitely a lot of suspicious elements but it's actually trying to work out. You know, it feels like there's a lot of pieces of the puzzle to try and put together but you can't quite figure it out. You know you start looking at things like celebrities who died at 27 or certain musician deaths or act deaths. You know how where do you draw the line and what do you look, look at really. Um, no. Yeah, I mean, some some deaths are more suspicious than others. I mean, what about Brandon Lee, um, son of Bruce Lee? Well, I mean, that's a, to have a gun on set which has a bullet in... I mean, is, that's obviously going to be murder. suspicious to me. Why would you ever even have a real bullet there in the studio? I'm not sure, if, again, of the exact details, but it's, it's suspicious, particularly after Bruce Lee's death. Yeah, that was while I was shooting the movie The Crow, which was a great film. Indeed. I mean, um, the pistol apparently that would, was loaded with real bullets had been used in a prior scene. Uh, no one realised that one real bullet was stuck in the gun's barrel. So when a blank cartridge was inserted and fired, it provided enough, enough force to push the real bullet out of the barrel. This is the explanation given. That sounds highly, highly unfortunate or suspicious. I'm not sure which. Well, again, in this case, um, conspiracy buffs um, blame martial arts secret societies that maybe David Carradine was involved with. But let's, while we're talking about um, Brandon Lee, let's talk about his father as well. I mean, I know, um, you know, there was a gap of about 36 years uh, between the deaths. He died uh, but he died suspicious. suddenly, apparently, from allergic reaction to medication. That was wasn't that while he was doing a film as well, or something similar? I'm sure it was because he was always making well, a film. That's wasn't true. He? Yeah, but um, yeah, again, it's another one of those possibly plausible explanations, but it does seem a bit strange. He was very young, it's pretty much around similar age, I believe, to his son. Indeed, indeed, and both um, at the height of their um, fame, really. I mean, Brandon. Well, Brandon Lee. He had a lot of years left in him. I mean, he was just becoming, obviously, a really good actor. The Crow was a great film, and I think he would have he would have gone on to become, you know, world famous. He was world famous anyway, yeah, exactly. even yeah. more so. But as as always, there are corporations in this world, or mafias as well, if you want to call them that, which I do, um, who, when they see people become famous. There are instant targets to be used for whatever reason to get in on some of the money or use them for whatever to, like I say, promote a message. Yeah, yeah. Some, it's weird because so when they've got the money, when someone's got that amount of money that some of these people have, some of these celebrities have, then people want to get their hands on that money uh, whichever way they can. And uh, you know, there are well, people out there prepared to kill for it. Well, Jimi Hendrix is one who... Uh, Allegedly, um, his manager had something to do with his death, I believe, because um, he was after his money. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise he, me he, at all. He made a reference to uh, the fact that he was going to die, I believe, as well. A lot of people seem to do that as well, make a reference. Maybe, maybe we only know about that with celebrities because a lot of their comments are recorded somewhere. Um, what about, let's talk about Michael Jackson. He apparently took an overdose as well. I think his doctor has been or is being prosecuted for that. Well, yes, definitely there's a 
uh, something suspicious over his death. Um, he was making a semi comeback of sorts, um, and there'd been a long run, long, long running battle with uh, various people around him, um, you know, record companies and you know, media, and you know, there was a lot of people who well, he was almost being kind of crucified in the press a lot of the time. Um, he was. I mean, he he actually said that. They're waging a campaign against me, and if you look at his life, it'd be difficult to argue that someone was doing that. I mean, you know, all the ridiculing him for certain things he did in his life, and um, there's the accusations of child molestation as well. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's one which at some point in my life I was convinced that he was, um, but now I'm not so convinced from various bits of research. Um, me too, I have to agree. After... I mean, I saw, um, we both actually saw this video earlier where he was, uh, Michael Jackson was giving a speech about, um, about the powers that be having an influence over the music industry. Can you remember what he was talking about? Well, he was basically warning against the Illuminati type controlling parties who we don't know about who run this world as such um, or manipulate this world um, he was saying don't trust history he knew something it, it also seemed to me like um, he had all his fans there and they were just cheering his every word but they actually weren't really listening well that's the thing that's 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 going off another element you know that's something which has been around since started probably around Elvis Presley kind of times 50s you know, again since the start of the entertainment industry of you know, initially young teenage girls screaming at people like Beatles to now you just have obsessive fans for everything you know, all over the place nowadays and, yeah, and that Michael Jackson interview literally was a bunch of people just screaming he, he could have said we're all going to die today and they were still have cheered and applauded um, and, it did seem that way yeah um, but I mean related to um, you know um, Michael Jackson also um, his I think you know, there was a big fight for him wanting to keep control of his legacy as such and what his you know, music is created and there's people who wanted wanted what he had and could do better out of him if he was dead. Um, well isn't that the case that when he died didn't he uh, the sales of of his music wasn't it more than the last 10 years? Yeah I believe so um, and that made some people very very rich. Um, Indeed. I mean that links into uh, Bob Marley um, I mean, I know there's, there's a number of conspiracies around him um, and Pete Tosh, you're both in the way, Bob Marley and the Whalers, or the Whalers originally, obviously. Um, uh, but with Bob Marley, again, um, he didn't, the, well, the band didn't become super, super famous uh, worldwide properly until after there were hardly any of them left. Just Bunny Whaler and uh, Bob Marley, Pete Tosh, and once two of them are dead. Their name became super famous, and uh, Island Records, I believe it was, um, profited very, very handsome, handsomely from it. And uh, I believe if you, if you look up online, you can read about Bunny Whaler's uh, beliefs on this. Um, and they didn't make hardly any money out of it. Um, and uh, yeah, and in Bob Marley himself, there's a the theory that uh, where he, he got an injury. Um, in a football match, but that's that's a kind of common myth that Danny Baker's tackle on him killed him because he. And the, the conspiracy theory goes that he already was given some injection by uh, some unknown parties, and he was getting treatment for it from a, a doctor who turns out it was an ex-Nazi doctor, which he went off for treatment after injuring his toe, and then a few weeks later he was dead. So yeah. this, um, well, were they not suggesting it to be amputated or something like that? Well, that's that's the thing. He had an injury, and uh, so he, I think it went gangrenous, and uh, yeah, he refused surgery. But he went off for treatment with this Nazi doctor, and he died at a ridiculous accelerated rate compared to how he should have died naturally from getting this having this cancer. Mm. So um, I mean, this yeah, I mean, that's that's another whole. Yeah, that's, you could talk about the Bob Marley. Conspiracy. You could, yeah, we're, we're just skirting over it, like I said, I mean, because you could talk about John Lennon and uh, Bob Marley as well. And Pete Tosh, was, wasn't was he Bob the guy Pete. that um, that um, some guys came into his house and like, they were torturing him, apparently? Uh, I think uh, there was two 
two that have never been named, and some have suggested that they might be well, exactly, yeah, belong to a secret organisation. Well, Pete Tosh and Bob Marley have both been, uh, I think, uh, attempts on their life a few times previously. Um, with Pete Tosh this time, he yeah, he'd come home from being away somewhere on the shores of Jamaica, um, and three men burst into his house and held him at gunpoint and um, d demanding money, which Pete Tosh said he didn't have any. Um, which they didn't believe, and they, I believe, tortured them. Um, in the meantime, a lot of Tosh's friends were turning up and because um, they were coming to welcome him back and then ended up spiralling out into this kind of standoff where um, they eventually shot him in the head and the, the two people he was with, I don't think they were ever identified, which is hardly suspicious for me, isn't it? Three it people is, involved in his death, and why is only one in prison? Why are the other two not identified? Which some conspiracy theorists say that uh, could have possibly worked for the CIA or somebody who wanted to influence, uh, you know, yet again, in the downfall of a, a political musician. And when it comes to musicians, it does seem to be it's the ones that are singing about peace and love, like Bob Marley and John Lennon, that seem to end up dead. Well, exactly. You don't get too many... Uh, Singers who sing about vanity uh, getting targeted in the same way. Let's talk about another um, frontman of a band, Kurt Cobain. Cause there's lots to talk about there. He allegedly killed himself by shooting himself with a uh, shotgun. Um, and it was case closed for a while, but I think recently the case has been reopened due to maybe some suicide notes that have been found. Um, I mean, one person and um, how many repeating what the talk is at the moment is that um, some people believe that Courtney Love may have been involved. Either, actually, I mean, when I say some people, I'm talking about her father. Uh, Courtney Love's own father, Hank Harrison, who's never, I mean, it, it would be fair to point out that they've never actually been that close, said he can't prove she pulled the trigger, but he can prove that she was involved. So it'll be interesting to see how that case develops. Well, I mean, I'd like to add um, a couple of things. First of all, there was uh, no marks from him at all uh, from using the gun, no gunpowder or uh, burns or anything as such, um, which is a bit strange. Apparently there was some some discrepancy with the suicide note and the writing. It seemed to be mockery, you know, quite different to, the, to what it was in the previous uh, note. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll read out one of the notes. I mean, sorry, not the previous note, the, the previous writing that they, you know, I think it's, yeah, they studied his handwriting and then they compared it to the actual note. There were some discrepancies. That's right, yeah. I mean, I think one of the notes that's been found is um, sort of hints at marital disharmony. Um, I mean, it said, Do you, Kurt Cobain, take Courtney Michelle Love to be your lawful shredded wife? even when she's a bitch with zits and siphoning all your money for doping and whoring. Um, that's apparently what the note said. And um, her father says that he thinks that no there's some clues in that note itself. Well, there's um, there's another theory as well about the amount of heroin that you're supposed to have taken would have made it impossible for him to actually use a gun. So, uh, that sounds fairly credible. But the, often these credible sort of explanations get... For, mysteriously uh, ignored. Let's let's move on to talk about um, another big one that we've mentioned already, John Lennon. What can you tell me about the John Lennon case? Well, I mean, um, all I heard about it when I was younger was some nutty Beatles fan had decided to, for no apparent reason, just go and kill one of his heroes. And uh, it was not until I looked into it that I realised that there's a whole lot of very strange... Um, information involved with it. The killer. Mark Chapman. Mark Chapman, that's right. He was found holding a book when you know, when he after he shot John Lennon and not only uh, holding it, I think reading it. Well yeah. I think Directly after shooting him. Reading it. Capture in the Rye. This is a book he was obsessed with, I believe. That's right, yeah, I mean um Capture in the Rye, which is about Holden Coldfield, he sort of identified with the main character by the sounds of it. Written by Salinger. J.D. Salinger, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I saw a documentary about um, Mark Chapman, and he was clearly a, two sides to him, where he's a very nice, relaxed, chilled person who was really good with the kids, and there was a person who ended up doing what he did. 
Um, yeah, he was once like a camp leader, and um, you know, a lot of people said he had affinity with children and was a really caring sort of guy, but he obviously had a dark side, um, which other people didn't know about. Yeah, well, um, I mean, he, he claimed he did it because John Lennon betrayed him in terms of having retired from speaking out about things. The way, the way you know, he was just found almost like a, it was all planned that you would get caught and then... Well, he had no intention of not getting caught. He, he shot John Lennon and then um, sat down and read, his, read Catcher in the Rye, waiting to be caught by the police. So obviously, it's almost, and that's why some people say he was a mind control victim. Like he'd done his job, and, and that was it. That like he'd it. done what he was asked <laughs> to do. You know, he apparently had like um, I read a book um, about him. He apparently had like a, a group of people inside his head, voices that talked to him, um, like a courtroom. And I, I remember him. I think this the book I was reading was actually written by him. He. He said that on the day of um, killing John Lennon, the court inside his head met to decide whether he should go ahead with it, and they decided he should. And I think when he was actually meeting John, there was voices in his head saying, do it, do it, do it, do it. Well, that's a classic mind control uh, example there, the voices in the head that have been programmed into tell you to do certain things. Exactly. I mean, Catcher in the Rye apparently also was um, found in the possession of John Hinckley, so some some have suggested that the book itself was some kind of mind control tool or a trigger to actually get them to do something. Sounds very plausible. Uh, it's so hard to be able to prove these things, obviously. Yeah, I think, I think uh, also Lee Harvey Oswald may have had that book. I mean, I guess if you go to a lot of people's bookcases, then there's going to be um, similar books if they happen to be book fans, but... I don't know. Um, Mark Chapman also did it for the notoriety, but it's still it's still suspicious. You know, you've got uh, John Lennon, who's if you compare him to the music of today, it's very political uh, for, uh, in the things it was calling for. You know, like Imagine the song Imagine, Imagine no religion, no countries. You know, these would have been fairly offensive ideas to religious and people and to the government maybe. Well, the irony is that's almost like a, what the original Illuminati message was, which um, in, I mean, the Illuminati date back to what, I think it's the 16th century, and their supposed original message was one world of peace and unity and everyone together, no countries, no borders, everyone just living together in harmony, uh, whereas obviously the current Illuminati supposedly want the same thing, but in terms of enslavement, where they rule over us with one world government, one army, etc. So it was like the antithesis of that. Yeah, I guess in some ways they should have been thanking him. Let's move on to um, Natalie Wood. What do you know about that case? Um, well, apparently she was on holiday with, I think, her, I believe, her husband, Robert Wagner, um, and Christopher Walken. That's right, and um, I don't think they were getting on too well, Christopher Walken and Natalie Wood's husband. Well, there's, um, you know, there's a legend... Um, an alleged incident of her argument being overheard and raised voices, and uh, later on of a woman shouting help from from the water. I believe that's right. She was heard by some some other people shouting for a while, but uh, I'm not. I think that they didn't want to risk their lives into swimming into the water and to finding out what the problem was. But I think there were discrepancies in the fact that she was where. Yeah, when she was, her body was found, she was wearing a coat still, which is strange for somebody who was, you know, trying to stay afloat. It's almost it was, like someone might have been pushed in the water, although the film I saw, it tries to make out maybe she was trying to get, go to shore maybe in a lifeboat and fell into the water. I mean, Again, I've heard there were scratch marks on the outside of the boat, which is another rather strange uh, fact. But again, you can only... Well, as we always do with any of the these celebrity deaths, unless you're personally involved, we can only go by what information we we can extract from various reports. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, we're we'll, we'll probably be coming to an end soon, so I'll just let's just finish up with a few more. Anna Nicole Smith, February the eighth, two thousand and seven, six months after the death of her um her son Daniel, Anna Nicole Smith was found in her hotel room 
unconscious. Um, I, I don't know if you've you seen that video where she's got sort of face makeup on, and yes. she's acting very strangely. Some suggest that was um, while she was under the influence of mind control. Again, there's the classic "what is wrong with her" kind of face, such as the uh, the guy from the cinema shooting. It's this strange kind of vacant look. Um, just like she just wasn't quite. She was struggling to stay in control of her mind, or her mind was drifting. You're right, it is similar to the guy from the cinema shooting, also from, uh, do you remember seeing that video with Britney Spears where she was being interviewed and uh, asked about the difficult year she had, and she started acting very strangely? Yes, I mean, I, it's not, I wouldn't say it's quite the same in terms of a um, blank look, but there was definitely, that was the kind of glitch kind of thing I kind of always describe it as, where somebody just seems to be glitching, like a program glitching on the computer where yeah. uh, you know, I mean, people claimed she was she said strawberries at the time I think but she was uh, I think um, she said strong, she strong, said strong Britney, Britney but it did yeah, sound like strawberries which were really she, even weirder which than, started the, made the rumour even more um, the conspiracy even more suspect but, yeah, yeah I mean but, some people should say that she is a mind control victim and she's done some odd things like shaving her head which some suggest is a part of the ritual you know and uh, there was that famous scene where Madonna's walking down the 13 steps at an award ceremony and almost hands the baton over to um, Britney Spears. But there's, you know, the people say there's a lot of ritual involved in... Well, I mean, it goes without saying, that's another whole topic of where you can just, again, just have... Uh, well, they, on, on YouTube or wherever else, you, you have whole videos just showing all the different rituals they do. There's people such as Beyonce or Marley Cyrus or Lady Gaga or any of them. There's a lot of uh, satanic imagery, um, strange, very strange symbolism, which uh, is basically being copied by people all over who are their friends. Yeah, um, let's just let's just go through a couple more. The Manson murders, um, basically, where Sharon Tate uh, was in the the home of um, the wife Roman, of Roman Polanski. Polanski that's yeah. right. The Manson family turned up. And basically, they, the, when they walked in, they said, uh, the main guy, I can't remember his name, he said, I'm the devil. And then they began torturing, stabbing, and shooting everyone in the household, including Sharon, who was pregnant, and begged them to, to leave her alone. But they obviously uh, didn't have enough mercy for her. I think they were their words. And you know, there seemed to be some Satanism or some dark forces at work in that case well, as well. Charles Manson was a strange one because he was actually a musician as well. He was a singer-songwriter um, and I believe that he had some affiliation with the Beach Boys at one point um, other uh, entertainment artists and actors I believe knew him um, but then he drifted into this cult which uh, ended up leading him to be involved with these horrific crimes. Indeed, indeed. We could literally talk about the um, talk about this in um, a lot of detail. Would take ages, and today we've only just skirted over the topic and really, like I said, just had a conversation like two people talking about what they already know. But we are going to try and get some guests on in the future who will go into a lot more detail. Anyway, I wanted to thank you for coming on today, Ron, uh, for doing sort of taking part in this program at short notice as well. Thank no you worries, very much. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's been it's been great. Cool. Uh, so take it easy. Thanks everyone for listening. Um, goodbye. So as I said uh, before, we're very lucky to have um, a Hollywood actor with us today. Stephen Shellen is a Canadian actor and voice actor uh, as well. He's appeared in many films and TV shows over the years, such as the TV series Counter-Strike, 21 Drum Street, Outer Limits. I used to watch some of that, a bit like The Twilight Zone. La Femme Nikita. Uh, and uh, also movies, big movies, um, with the movie, for example, um, Robert Redford's movie, A River Runs Through It, which um, I really like. It starts off with a bit of fly fishing, quite a relaxing movie to start off with, but then it gets um, it gets a bit darker. I always get mixed up with A River Runs Through It and Legends of the Fall, because um, they've both got Brad Pitt in it, basically. Um, Stephen was also in The Bodyguard, uh, Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage, 
and Stephen is the voice of David Sarif. Um, that's from the computer game um, Dezex, uh Human Revolution. Sorry for the pronunciation. Different people pronounce that in different different ways. Um, so now Stephen is helping to expose the people who are making the world much less than it could be. Um, Stephen can also give us some background info on Hollywood from the inside when he was working in the industry and how he became targeted for not doing as he's told anyway. So let's go over to the interview with Stephen. Hello. Stephen, it's Scott here. Hi, Scott there. <laughs> Hi, nice to talk to you finally at last. Yeah, good. So um, basically, thanks for coming and spending the time to chat with us. It just basically would be nice to hear about, you know, your story about what, um, how you became targeted by these people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, they, they say a good conspiracy is one you can't prove, right? Exactly, yeah. So that's basically, uh, that's been my dilemma for almost 20 years now. I had worked out of Los Angeles, and I'd sold my house in Los Angeles, and we were living on my farm in Canada, but I was still working primarily out of Los Angeles. And I was starting a production company in Vancouver, uh, and I had a partner who was a lawyer who um, knew people in the mining business and, and venture capitalists, and my idea was to start a production company with a distribution arm so that it wouldn't matter if it was made in the U.S. or Canada. Um, the, the advantage we would have is we'd be able to make movies and distribute our movies as well as other films we picked up at festivals. Mm -hmm. And in those days, I knew people like, uh, you know, Redford and, and uh, Brad Pitt and, um, you know, different, different Tim Burton, different uh, film directors and movie stars. So I could actually get people on the phone then. And... Uh, that was the plan was to um, have this uh, worldwide releasing company uh, and I wanted to call it Rockland Pictures and my partner wanted to call it Lionsgate. Um, Isn't there already a Lionsgate? Yes, it's the largest independent film company in the world. Yeah. It's worth in excess of, I don't even know, two billion, whatever. Mm. Um, if you Google Lionsgate Entertainment, You'll see some of the films they've made recently, and the sort of money involved in that company, and it's credited to Frank Guistra, who's a multi-billionaire in Canada, um, who came from the mining business and came from uh, venture capitalists and uh, and basically uh, uh, the stock market and whatnot, and. Um, my partner's name is nowhere mentioned anymore, so I don't know quite what had happened with that, but my partner's father, my partner claimed that his father ran CSIS, which is sort of Canada's equivalent of the CIA, and he talked to me in March of 96, I believe, and said that we no longer, we never had a production company, and that I should keep my mouth shut about my kids or I was dead. And, uh, I should back up and just explain that six months prior to that, in October 95, I came home from um, being down in California to see bruises on my uh, my wife at the time's face. And I asked her about the bruises, <clears throat> and she got very defensive. And I didn't understand why, because I honestly anticipated a reaction or anticipated an answer. Uh, you know, it was from... Uh, you know, a rake or a piece of wood in the barn or, you know, my son's coloring book. Mm -hmm. I never uh, expected this um, this freak out from her. And then later, my son told me, he was four years old at the time, about men hitting mummy. And I'd been advised to go to what they call in Canada children's aid. I don't know what the equivalent is in England, but um, it's child services. Mm -hmm. And I, I did that. And... uh that was the beginning um, of being thrown in a world of espionage that uh, it's straight out of something from born identity or enemy of the state. I was tracked, followed, death threatened, had constant break-ins. Um, my last conversation with my four-year-old son, he was four and a half at that, by, at, by that time, 
I had recorded that conversation because I was getting so little help from Children's Aid or the police, so I decided to take things into my own hands and record the conversation on a microcassette recorder, which I'd purchased that morning. And uh, I did that. And um, to date, I've probably made about 300 copies of that conversation. And I've had all but the original micro cassette um, stolen uh, from, they've stolen it out of cars, apartments, safety boxes, and banks. Um, I learned 19 years ago that if they want to get in a door, if they want to get in a, a safety box in a bank, um, if they want to get in your car, um, they can get in anything. And uh, so I was thrown into this world of intrigue, and uh, it, it was unbelievable. It, it was truly, truly, truly unbelievable. And could you explain what um, you were going to set up your production company? That's the thing that angered them. What, what in particular was it? I don't the, know if that's, hmm. yeah, that's the problem when I say a good conspiracy is one you can't figure out. Um, the fact that this partner, John Hardy, denied that we ever have a, had a production company, well, that was pretty alarming because I'd spent over a year, uh, close to two years, I suppose, um, putting it together, optioning other screenplays, writing my own screenplays, writing my own treatments. Um, and funny enough, when I was on my farm, I had an office uh, in a... In a um, what had been a chicken coop that I converted to a uh, an office and an art studio, and I had all my files for my treatments, my screenplays, ones I'd uh, optioned, and and uh, much of that was uh, stolen from me. And uh, I mean, I never did get a lot of it back. And there was a TV. There's been a TV series produced that made a lot of money in Canada called Do South, and I'd written a treatment very similar to what that was. I just found out along the way that um, initially I just thought she was a prostitute, which she admitted to being, and a call girl, and I had verification of that in France, but I never, um, I, I didn't know much about intellectual property theft, and, and uh, I was very um, trusting, I suppose, is, is is uh, the appropriate uh, word. <laughs> mm. um, I, so, if, whether, you know, whether it's Lionsgate, whether it was Lantos and Due South, um, whether it was because she was a, um, you know, came from a, I, I assume anyway, from everything I've learned the last 18 or 19 years, um, she came from a family, I believe anyway, of generational abuse, ritual abuse, um, she uh, had all the telltale signs of dissociative identity disorder, which is where you have different altars that are built into you. Um, my girlfriend that I'm with now, um, she's she's seen my ex-wife go through five personalities in the course of about three minutes with different voices, different mannerisms. Um, so you believe and she my, might have been like mind controlled or something? Oh, that, most definitely. Uh, my my girlfriend's mother was a psychiatric nurse, and my girlfriend used to spend time, you know, at the psych hospital visiting her mom, and she'd seen some pretty crazy stuff, but uh, she never <laughs> saw anything like this. Yeah. Did you ever, um, did you ever yourself express any sort of political views that might have upset anyone in the, in the film industry? Do you think? Yeah, um, I probably said a lot of things. Um, I, I basically said things about Canada versus the states, which is uh, Americans used to come up to Canada and shoot their films, and um, they get tax breaks. But more importantly which has never been addressed in any mainstream media, certainly. Um, they don't pay the actors, or paid them at the time nothing, I don't think, or very little, in terms of residuals. Now, when you do a film, like let's say I did um, two days' work on a film, but the film made 
um, two to three hundred million dollars worldwide. Well, I would get a, um, I would get uh, every couple months, I'd get a residual check from Screen Actors Guild. And when American film companies worked in Canada, they would never have to pay out residuals to the Canadian actors. So they'd bring up three or four maybe American actors, and then the rest were local hires, and they never pay out residuals. Well, I, I probably uh, stepped into a hornet's nest when I pointed out the obvious, which is, uh, you know that we, you know, when American companies shoot here, they don't pay out residuals. So as far as political, um, I don't know if that's political or not, but I certainly voice an opinion about it. Um, but as far as exposing Hollywood, the call girl activity in Hollywood, um, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I really was only concerned about my children, and I wasn't really concerned about what. Robert Evans, Jack Nicholson, uh, Redford, anyone else was doing, I simply wanted to know who had, oh, I forgot to mention this, who had threatened my four, four year old, four and a half year old son, threatened to hurt him if he talked to his daddy, which was on that recording, you know, the recording I'd made 300 copies of. Did you ever find out who that was? Nope. And the police weren't gonna... interested in helping, you know? No. The last thing you want to do is go to the police, I found out. <laughs> and most human rights organizations are bogus. And the irony of all of this is that I used to be quite good friends with a guy called Jack Healy, who had run Amnesty and who was responsible for that Live Aid thing that they did in uh, Africa, you know, with uh, Bono and all those and different... Bob Geldof uh, as well, yeah? Uh, no, I guess that's Geldof. Okay, so there was the other one. It wasn't the Live Aid. It would have been... Um, the one that came later. Yeah, it was Amnesty International that sponsored it, and that okay, was Jack yeah. Healy. And Jack Healy was close friends with with Bono and and different and different people. Well, Jack Healy was a friend of mine. I actually had given him a ben benefit at one point because I was staying at Shane Black's house because I moved out of L.A. back to the, this farm in Canada, and then when I visited L.A., uh, my ex-wife had helped or been a um, consultant on a movie called Long Kiss Goodnight, which anyone that listens to this should really check out Long Kiss Goodnight because I had no idea at the time. Um, I knew Shane Black. Uh, he had asked to speak to my wife at one point. And I said, well, you know, she's 3,000 miles away on a farm and he apparently wanted some translation, but there's no, from French to English, but there is no French in the film, there's no French subplot, there's nothing, but Gina Davis plays a a uh, CIA assassin, programmed assassin. So it's quite interesting that uh, my ex-wife was, was asked to, um, you know, speak with um, Shane Black. I don't know what exactly he was asking her. Um, weren't you weren't you in uh, La Femme Nikita as well yourself? Right? Yeah, exactly. I was, mm -hmm. and that was when I was actually I was on the run. Um, I was being tracked, followed, and messed with almost day in and day out at that point. And I'd come to Canada to hook up with a friend who had been on the board of directors of the production company that I was starting, and uh, I came up to ask him some questions face to face. And also, everything had dried up in L.A. for me at the time. And then, uh, so I basically had gone into hiding. And I was in uh, Nova Scotia, staying with this uh, this friend of mine who, you know, was part of the production company. And, um, you know, he confirmed everything for me. And, yes, I remember you were starting that with, we were all starting that with John Hardy and blah, blah, blah. Well, I suddenly, out of the blue, after not having worked for quite a quite a long time, I suddenly got a call from uh, Joe Cerno's office to come in and do four episodes of La Femme Nikita. And uh, that's, other than one exception, that's the last time I worked. What was that, 14 years ago? It, it, was, it was absolutely bizarre. I mean, you're talking about programming again. And um, I was playing a cop who had investigated a... Um, a rapist killer, and I'd uh, gone to see Nikita, not realizing who she was, and saying, I just want the truth. I just want the truth. 
And uh, and then what happened is she told me, um, you'll be sorry. Um, you don't know what you're dealing with. All the stuff I'd heard in real life. It was almost <laughs> like, talk about art in imit- imitating life. Mm-hmm. It was unbelievable. Nice. And I'm having to say these lines, and it's like, this is like lifted right out of my own life. So uh, I did these four episodes of that show, and uh, I guess that kind of finished me off. I don't know. Have you ever, you know, since that time, have you ever tried getting back into the oh, sure. industry? Oh, yeah. It's like, it's it, it's honestly, I mean, that's true insanity is when you keep trying to uh, get a different result, you know, from the brick wall. Um, yeah, it, it's it's futile and hopeless and finished, and that's just the way it is, you know. Who do you and think the, the sad- people are um, who sort of send the the order down not to give you the positions or things like that. Who's in, who's in control of this? I don't know. I really don't know. And do you know of any other actors or actresses that are being targeted, threatened, or or, or even killed because of, um, you know, something they've done as well? Yeah, it's really hard. You know, I don't want to make the... the I, I have a term called lunging, and lunging is for any anything that that feels or sounds conspiratorial where you you jump to um, a, a conclusion but you, you can't and, and this thing is so well orchestrated from the top down that it's I mean there's lots of questions I have about some celebrity deaths and and some celebrity uh, celebrities that have experienced problems like Brittany Brittany Murphy for example I've actually spoken to a girl called Julia Davis, who, um, it's quite a long involved story, but if anyone... Actually, Googled... I, I, we, have, we have spoken about the background of that. She was the activist okay. uh, who was working on the bo- with the border agency. That's she? right. You got it, man. Good. Oh, good. I'm glad you're aware of it. Yeah. So, Brittany, Brittany Murphy, um, I don't think she was just hung out to dry. My feeling is... Um, they had some integrity, her and her husband, and so consequently, um, they just became um, uh, liabilities that they didn't mind getting rid of, because they both died, both her and her husband, of really, really odd cir- circumstances, and it just smells really, 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 really wrong, and I know Julia Davis has great guilt and... uh you know, she feels terrible that, that Brittany, in fact, got killed. And it's not unusual, and this is something people don't understand. It's like I just said, I just said to my girlfriend about an hour ago, you know, a lot of people fault me because they say, well, why didn't the CIA kill you? Or why didn't whoever's done this to you just kill you? Well, they, there were three attempts in the very beginning, and then there are other people like me. They don't take out the mouthpiece necessarily, but they'll take out people on the periphery, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, they could like, why didn't they take out Julia with... Davis, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Maybe they and thought Brittany Julie... Murphy had more, uh, sort of a, a larger influence. That's right. That, that's a good point, actually. That's probably why they, because they were maybe, or maybe Brittany Murphy had had some private phone conversations that they listened in on, and we don't know what Brittany Murphy had said to other people about it, and when they tried to put pressure on her to lie about Julia Davis, Brittany Murphy wasn't prepared to do that. And she may have had private conversations with other people that the bad guys had listened in on, and they just said, wow, we can't allow Brittany Murphy to get loose with this story because we're covering it up. And so they decided, well, we'll just take her out. Maybe, maybe it does. It does seem like two people who are sort of in their early thirties, I think, uh, dying yeah. of um, uh, poisoning. It's, I mean, some people yeah. say rat poison was found. Even her father believes that she was murdered. I believe. Yeah, he does actually. He seems like a guy of integrity too. Like he, he seems like a pretty good guy. Yeah. I guess the you know I almost look now for anyone that's called uh, schizophrenic or crazy. Um, you know, it, there are crazy people, and there are crazy people that claim to be TIs, but there's also a lot of people that aren't crazy. And when you start reading all this, uh, when you go online and even on alternative news and then 
the shills come out, which is what Edward Snowden talks about, and the NSA deploying all these people to go online and cause all these disruptions and, and talk crap about people. Well, um, if I read a bunch of crap about someone and that they're crazy, I'll listen to the person who they're calling crazy, and then I'll make my own conclusions. And generally, not always, but generally, Oh, it's clear as a bell. Yeah, of course they're calling this person schizophrenic and crazy because they're, in fact, speaking the truth. And Brittany Murphy, they, they did a great smear campaign. Oh, it's so sad. And she was involved in drugs and, you know, it's drug related. And they do the fake empathy thing and then they smear the crap out of someone. I think and you're the right, general yeah. public eats it up. You know, oh, yeah, well, oh, poor Brittany Murphy. Her and her husband must have been, like, drug fiends or something, you know? Yeah, they do that. I mean, I, I, when you say that, I think of Lady Diana, who they sort of tried to make out she was going mad. And um, then I thought we were talking about Michael Jackson earlier and how, you know, all the stories that used to come about out about him, about sleeping in tanks and, you know, and there was the child molestation story. And I'm just wondering now, he says he was targeted as well because he came out and started talking about the music industry. I mean, now I'm starting to think maybe he was telling the truth. You know, maybe he was targeted and a lot of the stories were just something, a, a way to, um, to discredit him. Yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. You know, I mean, with Michael Jackson, he was pretty odd, right? I mean... You got to admit, he he was. Yeah, no, he he did seem he to be. But, but isn't that guy. isn't that because of what we were reading in the media, though? Yeah, yes, you know that's. I mean, that, that's a hard one to to gauge. You know, that's a really tough one. I mean, the sleepovers with kids and stuff that kind of creeps me out. Well, yeah, but I mean, yeah. We don't know what really happened because we weren't there. But I know Michael Jackson was um, really pissed off at Tommy Mottola. Um, and I, you know, that, that boy, man, I mean, as far, how far the rabbit, how far down the rabbit hole do you want to go if, if you accept that they're chemtrail spraying us? And if you accept that there is a great possibility that we are, human bodies are absorbing nanoparticles and that we're all basically getting, um, hooked up and, uh, becoming uh, almost uh, transhuman. Um, mm. If there's truth to that, and there's a lot of indications that there is, then this global crazy conspiracy is, uh, is pretty insane. And if they use movies and, film and, and music as a... Um, you know, it's called Revelation of the Method, where they're telling you the truth, but they're doing it with, like, The Simpsons, or they're, yeah, they're the doing movies, it with yeah. a movie. Mm -hmm. The majority of people just think it's entertainment, and they don't pay attention. I can't tell you my frustration of 19 years of people just assuming, well, you did those movies, you were an actor and a screenwriter, so you just, you just, think you're one of those characters in one of the films of the TV show, La Femme Nikita, that you did. And, man, I mean, the design of it is, is perfect, you know? Yeah. I mean, if I was a musician and I wanted to get a record deal, but I got to do the pyramid sign and do the one-eye sign and do all this really kind of obnoxious, really stupid... I mean, Madonna at the Super Bowl is the prime example. Was you that know? the one where she was coming down the steps? Yeah, yeah, all that, yeah, all that Egyptian crap. You know, like it, it, it's so retarded, man. I mean, it's just so lame. Like, well, you hear that's I, what I, you I, have to do. I've heard all this stuff, like, and you just wonder how how much of it is true. You know, I we live well, in me, a crazy world. You know, I also think there's a lot of actors that are completely unaware. But they'll stick those actors like a Morgan Freeman. Like I don't. That guy seems like he's got integrity, and yet he's in movies that are revelation of the method. Most TV series right now in in America, because um, I'm in Canada right now, but we get American programs or stations, and almost all the new series. It's like, man, uh, it's it's just it's all about the spy game. It's all about transhumanism. It's all about, uh, you know, hidden technologies or future technologies, which aren't hidden or future. 
I mean, Tesla was working on stuff a hundred years ago about, you know, energy weapons and directed energy weapons. And uh, I have a personal friend or a guy I know called Ro Dr. Robert Duncan, who's who worked on developing this stuff. So, you know, it's not future. And we're, li we're, li we're living in a science fiction world, really, aren't we? I mean, what people used to call science fiction, it's it's all around. Uh, right, it's all you around got us it. Now, isn't it? I mean. We, yeah. Um, just today, I think uh, in the news, I read that uh, the first driverless cars are going to be allowed on the roads in England now. Oh yeah, I believe. Yeah, I mean this whole thing about buying oil or gasoline for your vehicle. Like, come on, man, we're so far beyond that. Like, i you know, I mean, I'll tell you how how how. I mean, I am. Here's how crazy I've gotten with it. I. I, I can imagine, I'm not saying I know for a fact because I haven't done it and I haven't been there, but the whole idea of um, colonizing a place like Mars, let's say, with, with, with uh, spaceships that are not fueled by rocket ship gasoline stuff, but actually using Tesla's technologies that he was developing. It's not unheard of to imagine that there's there's a way with black with the access of black holes and different things things to travel space, but they're not going to be doing it with a you know rocket fueled ship. They'll be doing it with advanced. It's like the whole the whole notion of these oh with UFO. Well, the Nazis had UFOs in the Second World War. You know, like the Nazi bell. Why don't people ever think, why why isn't that you know, looked at more seriously, like... Well, there's a lot... I mean, they did used to be taken seriously in the 50s, UFO sightings, but after the 50s, it seemed they were deemed conspiracy theories and, and just crazy people see them. But, you know, there's been millions of people who've seen UFOs. Well, I don't, I don't think it's necessarily spacemen that are visiting us with UFOs. I actually think it's stuff that's been developed uh, with Tesla technology, along with Hitler, Vril Society, you know... Demonology, all kinds of stuff. I think that this this stuff has been developed. I mean, you know, when you think about the drug trade that's controlled by agencies like the CIA and you know all the and all the spy agencies all work together. I found that out the hard way. Spy agencies don't work for the country that they're like. They all work hand in hand. Like MI6, MI5 works with CIA or works with uh, Mossad. I mean, they're all. They're all interchangeable. They share information. They're all working for Doctor Evil and his gang. You yeah, know? they're working together, but not in a good way. It's you know, it's to to make our yeah. lives harder. Yeah. So I mean, as far as like Hollywood and what they're telling us in the TV series, man, it, it's I, I, I'm even surprised. I'm like, oh my god! Now they've got you know, they've got a new series called Stalkers or something which is about stalking people. They've got another one about surveillance technology, tracking everything you do everywhere you go, which is what I went through 19 years ago. And I couldn't understand how if I use phony names, how if I, you know, um, sneak around, park my car three blocks away, how do they still find me? How do they still knock on my uh, hotel room door? How do they still phone me in the middle of the night, wake me up, death threaten me or hang up on me? How do I still get harassed repeatedly, no matter where I go and what I do? How do they find me? Well, you know, they, they've had that technology for a while. Yeah, how, um, when they knocked on your door, who did you open it? I mean, who was it? Then? Oh, of course. They ran to open it. There'd be no one there. Yeah. Then you run out in the hall, but you don't see anyone, and you're half asleep or, you know, whatever. You're in your underwear. I mean, you know, it's... There's a, there's a group in, in, in England that were soldiers, I think, in Iraq, and a lot of them came back, and they were sick, and one thing and another, and they, they wanted to get benefits, and they got cut off from benefits, and then they started yelling about, hey, we want our benefits. And they got targeted. Now, these guys, um, one of them, uh, they train like bodyguards. They're, 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 you know, they're, these guys are like sneak behind enemy lines, sort of assassin, like, you know, Super incredible mercenary army guys, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't know. They can't catch them at it. So... That sort of gives the whole thing some credibility because if these guys are trained with that stuff, and even for them, they're 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 shaken out of their boots and don't understand how it's done and can't ever catch anyone at it, then you can imagine 
you know, someone like me or anyone else. I mean, we're we're just not. It's it's done. I guess I, I back in the day, I thought it was done all with uh, you know walkie talkies communication. Like he's coming out the door. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't know how they did it. All I know is that they did it. And um, do you think they're still targeting you now? No, they aren't. I don't have people waiting outside for me. I don't get knocks on the door. I don't get any of that stuff. They're just happy that they did enough to me, <clears throat> and they do enough to me online um, that, you know, I've kind of become, um, you know, blacklisted. So I, I don't go through it. I also have a girlfriend, and I have people with me. So, no, they don't, they, they don't, it's not the same when you're, you know, with others. Because all it does is it gives other people that are with you, because, for example, I went to my bank where I had a safety box and it disappeared. It evaporated. But my girlfriend was with me this time. So suddenly it's like, it's not just me, it's her too. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I've never seen any, that's impossible. And I'm like, well, you see what I mean? Yeah, it's always good and to have a other things that, yeah, you know, so they don't want that. The last thing they want is someone to collaborate your story. I'll give you one other example. I did a voice job about, I don't know, three years ago uh, for a video game. That's right. And I got human, uh, uh, d- d- Dizek. Dizek human Revolution, yeah. yeah. And it was a really good video game, and it won awards, and it was all about transhumanism. But I didn't know until about three months into doing it. So I did it over the course of, I think, two or three years. I'd go in every couple of weeks and do another batch of dialogue and I'm, I came home and I'm like oh shit you won't believe this I'm like you know I, I'm doing this voice for this guy David Seraph, and I'm like this guy who augments people owns this major corporation and it's all about ushering in this whole transhumanist agenda anyway I kept doing it and then the game came out and lo and behold it got really great reviews and I got nominated for some best video game in the world kind of awards. And then I got nominated for a Golden Voice Award <laughs> by some online gamer kids. Hmm. Well, it was shortly after that. And then some of them had suggested I play in the movie because CBS had optioned it to make a movie of it. Um, and some kids had said, oh, yeah, you should hire Stephen Shellen to, to play the character in the movie because he's already an actor. You know, he's not just a voice actor. Yeah. Well, right after that, they took a video I'd done with the Truther Girls, which was a spoof. It was on a comedy channel. They ripped it from her channel, which she's never had happen before, Sonia from the Truther Girls. They ripped it from her. They reposted it as something serious about the voice actor Dave, for David Seraph losing his mind. Mm. And then at least 22 gaming sites, mainstream gaming sites, without them ever cross-referencing or looking to see that it came from a comedy channel or trying to find out who Sonya is, whose name I mentioned in it, Instead, I mean, I did it as a joke. I was actually making fun of people that take conspiracy theories too far. Mm -hmm. And what happened is they all carried the same story. Oh, poor Mr. Shellen. He's lost his mind. He's a schizophrenic and he needs help. Mm -hmm. So that, I mean, that's still, if you Google Stephen Shellen, you'll get, you'll get like one or two pages in the beginning all about like me and my, my fruit fly video and how insane I am. Even though it was a joke, and even though they say I mentioned the Illuminati, you're trying to kill me. I never once in the video because I don't even like the word Illuminati. I never reference or use the word Illuminati. Um, is that the one where you're looking in a mirror? I think I had a, I had a quick look earlier. No, I did that as a reaction to it. I did oh, that okay. to I did that as a to challenge them a little. No, it was one, uh, it was a fruit fly. It was about fruit flies spying on me. <laughs> and I talk about smoking a little bit of weed and, uh, you know, I mean, for, for me and my friends anyway, unless we're completely nuts, uh, it was pretty obvious to, to, to anyone that's close to me and my friends anyway that, uh, yeah, of course it's a joke. But they all carried the same story and uh slag you know slammed me and stuff so yeah it makes you wonder about the entertainment business i mean you know why did all those gaming sites carry that 
that story? Why didn't one single journalist or supposed journalist, why didn't they check the story out, you know? No. Nope. So, so does that mean you're definitely not going to be um, in that film then? No, 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 no. No, <laughs> uh, that's, uh, yeah, no, that's not going to happen. No. Uh. And at this point, I don't think I'd want to be in it because the more I learn about transhumanism and what that is and what's going on, yeah, I don't want to... I don't want. I don't want to encourage that. I don't want to facilitate them. I don't. Nah. You know. Forget it, man. If you. What is it? If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything, or something like that. Yeah, I think that's it. Is that what it is? I think so. Well. I'm, yeah. So. I'm not going to disagree with you, and it sounds good. Yeah. No. What about you? Have you gone through any any targeting? Have you gone through any weird stuff, or or they're leaving you alone? Well, I, I've only been doing this um, sort of radio broadcast for, what, I don't know, six months now. And, you know, there's been occasions where I've wondered, you know, I've seen like a white van pull away as I come out of the house. It screeched away and, um, you know, things like that. But nothing, uh, you know, sometimes I, I wonder if I'm going to get stopped at airports and stuff. But no, no, at the moment, I seem to be, well, I mean, I say I'm off their radar, but, you know, according to Snowden, then... I don't think I think we're all on the radar, aren't we, at the moment? Yeah, and I think you know it's just just a theory of mine, but I I mean they'll, they'll stop me from working, but I'm you know and, and maybe it's uh maybe it sounds a bit vain of me, but I have this I have this theory that um, these evil fuckers or bastards that are doing this, I, I think the one the the few of us that are actually seeing through this maze. I I I, I kind of feel like they may have some. I mean, they're so they're so disgusting and awful. I, I I it's not like they're ever gonna respect us or anything. But they they have to on some level. I think they acknowledge that at least we're not um, we're not dumbed down. We're not uh, we're not buying their Kool Aid. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and you would have to be fairly dumb to accept some of it. I mean, I know you said about the Illuminati, um, the actual name, which I agree with you. I, d I don't think that group probably exists under that name, although some, you know, maybe, no. they, maybe they do, I don't know. But did you ever come across any sort of um, control systems when you were in, you, when you were actually in the industry and in, in working in some of the movies? Like, did you come across any weird stuff like satanism or um, no i didn't controlling see that's stuff. the other no no i didn't man see that's the other weird thing i wish i could say and that's why you know when you sent me the email and i was trying i was responding to you it's like i you know i really wish i could say oh yeah i saw this this and this no i really didn't i i really didn't and that's why i think some actors are really in the dark about the whole thing and they get these parts like a Morgan Freeman or some, something like that. And they just go along and do the film. They imagine that it's, you know, some kind of sci-fi movie. Uh, they don't realize, they don't realize what, they're, what they're inadvertently promoting. Um, you know, I, I don't think all the actors are, are, are in on it. You know, I think a few are. Um, Scientology is... Uh, I mean that that temp that Scientology Celebrity Center was just down the street from where I I don't owned a, a house. Uh, the whole Scientology thing. I went once, and um, and I I I I never I left. I mean I I couldn't stomach it. It was just it, I was I was hoping it. Well, let's I'll check it out. Okay, sure. Thinking it was some sort of spiritual something, and then it, it was so obvious to me just from the one visit that uh this is this is just rat shit this is terrible i mean this is this is ridiculous and yet scientology certainly has uh you know done well in hollywood well uh, tom cruise has Br done seem to have done okay out of it isn't he yeah and i guess brad pitt used to be involved in it um because he went out with uh, Juliette Lewis, whose whole family's in it. Hmm. Uh, I think what it, what's what's uh, alarming is when you get right into L. Ron Hubbard and his association with Jack Parsons, who uh, 
you know, had developed, uh, you know, uh, worked with Na NASA, and they, they had um, serious satanic ceremonies and stuff. And you realize at the very top of, of Scientology, it's, um, you know, it's pretty dark what they're, what they're what, worshipping, you know. It does seem that way, yeah. I mean, what was Brad Pitt like um, in the time you spent with him? Do you seem like fairly sort of down-to-earth person? Uh, everyone asks about Brad Pitt. Um, he, he was all right. Um, my daughter looks amazingly like Brad Pitt, which is kind of surprising, hmm. but maybe not. Um, I didn't, Brad Pitt was very, pretty young then. It was one of his first films. Um, I mean, do you, he, do, do the cast normally get quite friendly with each other? Do you all chat to each other? Or is it just sort of like... Well, we all lived in the same little tiny, um, this little motel with four 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 apartments uh so so like brad pitt was actually my next door neighbor i believe at this motel where we shot uh you know river runs through it in montana mm -hmm. and uh you know i mean i i spent a bit of time with him um he seemed like an okay guy he he wasn't uh he didn't strike me as um you know a whole whole lot of backbone or anything i mean i you know, maybe just because he was young. I, don't, I really don't know. I mean, I don't know what to make of um, of this whole thing. I mean, it just goes to show you. I mean, me personally, on a first-hand experience, um, wow. I mean, the whole idea of celebrity and, and who gets promoted and who doesn't. Yeah, and, that's and, what I was thinking of, you know, because you were both in the same film. That was a good film, by the way. I enjoyed that. Oh, film. thanks, man. But um, you know, you're both in the same film. He went on, you know, he's still, well, he's still pretty successful, isn't he? Isn't he one of the highest paid actors? Um, oh, I think he still is. Yeah. So. Yeah, I have no. I, I'm funny. I, the one thing I don't suffer, thank God, um, other than remorse about what happened to my children, I don't really, I don't spend a lot of time or energy um, feeling envious or jealous of anyone that got promoted i feel like you know when i'm at my healthiest and when i'm the most sort of centered you know inside myself i i actually feel um a great deal of uh almost pride that um i got thrown into this this dark whirlpool and that you know i've been saying the same story for 19 years and i've just watched well, the simplest, littlest thing was, oh, that's outrageous. You know, uh, and I've just sat back and I've watched. And now, like, there's there's so much revealed, you know. The question is, don't trust alternative news either because that's been, inf everything gets infiltrated. So you have to form your own opinions about things. I'm lucky that I had firsthand experience, but what's nice is that I've seen so much be revealed, you know, in the last, say, 10 years. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people um, have this quest for fame. It seems to be a big thing these days. You don't even need to have particular talent. You know, people just want fame, and they'll almost do anything to get it. I mean, you didn't seem to, you don't seem to suffer from that at all, no? No, not really, no, not really, no. Um, you know, when I was young, I'd gone to England at 20 years old, and I uh, I was kind of short actually, but I, I I started modeling, and I had you know great success in the modeling thing for a couple of years, and then I was embarrassed, and I tried to hide that part of my past, and you know never mentioned it in Hollywood and stuff. But I'd gone to New York and and done that briefly also, and uh, so I sort of had some success doing that, you know. So maybe I got exposed at a young age. And I never really took the um, the fame thing all that serious. So when uh, when I'd go through these um, these slime bag bags in, in Hollywood, when they'd approach me, or let's say some gay producer approached me or something, for me it was sort of like you know, I was so pedestrian and cheesy. You know, it was so bad. I was like, wow. I mean, people actually fall for this, you know, or those 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 you know USC volleyball players fall for this crap like wow you know when you say, when you say approach you what do you mean sorry 
oh, you know, come to my place for dinner, and then they, oh, yeah. you know, they try to move in on you and, uh, you know, make advances and promise to put you in their movie and, and mm. crap like that. <laughs> you know, it was all, it, by that time, I'd kind of been around the block, and I was like, oh, boy, that's that's so bad, man. You should get some, some new lines or something, if, you know. If that's the best you can do, boy. I know that I have anything against anyone gay. I don't, but I'm just not gay, you know. And I had enough kind of weird experiences that, oh, yeah, that's not very comfortable. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, what's your, what's I don't your... even have my drink drugged or anything like that, you know. I was going to ask you, because I'm probably going to have to wind up for today um, yeah. soon, but I hope we can have a chat again. Um, no, I'm really glad you called me. I, I'm really glad. Um, I wish I could shed more light on Hollywood and the dark, mysterious nature of it. Um, I don't doubt, I know it exists. I know that um, agencies play a key role in Hollywood, developing projects along with the studios. You mean Absolutely. like um, what, the CIA, you mean? Yeah, well, you know, take your pick, right? Whether it's the CIA or MI6 or Mossad or whoever it is, CSIS, I mean, they're all related, like I said earlier. So I, I know they've, I mean, they physically have an office out there. I know a director um, that was working on something that got murdered and had his hands cut off, I believe. They found him in a truck, his skeleton with his hands cut off. Gary DeVore. That's pretty interesting. Is that, and Gary is, that DeVore, um, is that sort of common information people can find on the internet? Or? Gary DeVore, yeah. Mm -hmm. Gary, G-A-R-Y, and then uh, last name D-E, capital V-O-R-E, I believe. Mm -hmm. It's really weird that his hands were cut off, and he was working with um, Tommy Lee Jones' his cousin or something who admitted and had an office and worked for the CIA and was out in L.A., and uh, I think Gary was warned, because I'd seen him back in 97, when I was already getting tracked and followed, and he was excited to tell me about something he was working on, I believe, about Panama. Panama, And he was a pretty, um, he's kind of a, a hard-drinking kind of, you know, throwback to the old days of Hollywood, that kind of tough guy thing. So I don't think they scared him off, and, and then he just went missing, and then they found him. So... His wife and different people have a lot of questions about what happened, you know, to Gary DeVore. And I think that, I'm just saying, the agencies, yeah, I mean, this whole thing, this whole world's obviously controlled by Dr. Evil and his gang. So everything that's got influence, and that certainly is the entertainment businesses, whether it's music, film, TV, uh, video games, you know, that's, if you want to control the world, if you want to control the world, if you want to control how people think, which is ultimately what it's all about, and it really is a spiritual battle, uh, so wouldn't you grab a hold of the most powerful influence, you know, that we have in the world? Well, of course they would, right? They would indeed, and, um, you know, you mentioned directors. I think, well, these are the people that make the movies, and, you know, I wonder if sometimes, like you were saying, they, they get members of the family as well, like that guy who directed um, Hunger Games. You know, right, that's, that, that's Lionsgate Entertainment. They put that out. Yeah, and then the son went on a, a shooting rampage, didn't he? Oh, yeah, that's right. The cinematographer's son or whatever, yeah. That was weird. That was all weird. those things are weird. All, you know, Sandy Hook, it's all weird. You know, it, it's, it's very weird. Yeah, I mean, and what, what's your opinion? And, just briefly, before before we're gonna have, I'm gonna have to go in a sec. But just yeah. briefly, what's your opinion on the crisis actors kind of scenario? A lot of people sort of say about Sandy Hook, you know, some of those guys are actors, and about you know Boston bombing, and um, well, they, being, they being an actor have... yourself, maybe you, you can spot them easier. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. See, they to me, to me personally, they strike me as really bad actors. Mm. And, and I and I think that this Doctor Evil and his gang have got such a such a control over the planet right now that I don't even think they give a fuck one way or the other or give a rat's ass if if people can see through it. It's just so poorly done. I mean, that guy that saved the kids and, and they found him. He found them on their in his front lawn in Sandy Hook. I mean, what is up with that guy? He's either. Is there some kind of weirdo Satanist, bad actor? I really don't know. I mean, it's just, it, it rings completely false. Mm -hmm. That's all I know. And the guy whose daughter was killed, and he's laughing before he 
gets interviewed. That's right, the, yeah. Yeah, and the and the and the corner the corner guy, I mean yeah, and there they was, couldn't there have was, made it more obvious. I think they're laughing at us by putting that out there. I think they're mocking us, actually. Could be. There was one recently, I can't remember her name, but her her family were, were gunned down, uh, were killed. And she was the only survivor. I think apparently the bullet missed her and hit her, deflected off her finger or something, which seems a very unbelievable story in itself. But her reaction afterwards, just two days afterwards, she seems to be laughing, joking. She's doing this... Uh, Satanic, yeah, satanic symbol and, and sort of waving to the crowd. That all seems really odd as well. I don't get that. Yeah, it is weird. It's it, And it's weird to think that, oh, gee, Satanists are running the planet because, oh, what, are you a Christian? Whoa, are you like a holy roller? And it's like, well, the more you sort of dig into this dark hole, the more that does kind of make sense that there's certainly the Luciferian Satanism um it, yeah, it plays a it plays a major role in all of this. And whether they're bringing demons in from other dimensions, uh, you know, um, the the whole animal hybrid human thing that they're using or doing in in laboratories, and they found one in England. Uh, all these animal human hybrids. Um, there's something pretty dark going on, like really dark, like. Yeah, I don't know. But before you hang up, just make sure you check out uh, Shane Black, Long Kiss Goodnight. That'll be kind of revealing because he talks about 9-11 four years before it happens. Okay, Shane um, Black, Long Kiss Goodnight, yeah? Yeah, Long Kiss Goodnight. That's Gita Davis, and that was the film that my ex-wife was uh, supposedly making a French into English translation or English into French, sorry. But, um, yeah, that movie itself... Um, with the DID, a dissociative identity disorder that, that she, dis, uh, you know, uh, showed, exhibited, and, uh, and just the whole, the, the whole 9-11, um, maybe Shane Black gassed and got it right. I really don't know, but it's, it's pretty odd. Um, so Hollywood plays a major role. Uh, transhumanism is what we're kind of being indoctrinated with, and the, the, the trick is that we're making kids want to, be able to jump off the 20th floor. Oh, yeah, I want to have legs that will sustain me when I jump off the 20th floor. Um, and so they're making transhumanism sexy for some reason and cool. And look at all the Avengers series, right? Mm. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it also seems like, as well as merging humans and machines, that they're almost yeah, like they're trying soul. to get rid of humans altogether. That's and just right. Stick, stick with the machines. Oh, man, you got it. I think that's it. I think that may be in a really simplistic way. Uh, I think that's a great possibility. That's all. That's what ultimately the agenda is, is just get rid of these humans that think for themselves and have hearts and souls and feel things. Uh, get rid of that heart. Create this, uh, this hybrid transhumanist, um, um, you know, quasi-human that you don't have to worry, worry about their souls because they're soulless. And they'll well, just do whatever you want. I think if the elite are left with these machines, they should get on well because a lot of a lot of them are soulless without emotions, you know. Yeah, and you're seeing that in your British politics right now, aren't you, with Jimmy Savile and all the look at the huge uh, exposure that's gone on in your country recently, right? Well, they're cover they're trying to cover it up. I mean, some people in alternative media have known about this for years. You know, all these right. uh, high level. M uh, members of Parliament, even going up to Prime Ministers in some cases. Well, I know about Heath. Edward Heath, that's who I was thinking of, yeah. Yeah, man. And, and they're, they're never going to... They off the boat. They never saw those kids they're again. Never, they're going to try and cover it up as much as they possibly can or, or just release the information so slowly that within 50 years no one's going to going to care. Would you anymore. ever go to Jersey and sniff around the island of Jersey? I've never been to Jersey actually, but I've heard yeah, I've heard some um, some. Did bad you hear about, about that the, one at that yeah, uh, the, uh, orphanage there? Yeah, I heard about that. That yeah. that's a scary place, man. And I didn't realize it's one of, if not the wealthiest, certainly one of the wealthiest offshore banking, uh, uh, you know, areas in the whole world. Yeah, that's right. It rivals Switzerland, Caicos. I mean, Jersey is wealthy beyond belief. Yeah, so a lot of them probably hang out over there. And, get and up Savile used stuff. to go there. He did. I mean, the Savile story, I think we've only heard the half of it at the moment. You know, he, 
he was best friends. I'm, I'm, all I'm going to say is he was best friends with members of the royal family, you know? <laughs> you got it. You got it, man. That's like, but there's people, see, when you get into the black arts and the ceremonies that they do and what Kubrick was trying to expose with Eyes Wide Shut, and, and I've got a lot, I do, you don't have time now, but maybe at another time we'll do a conversation about Kubrick. Oh, definitely. And I've got yeah, inside let's, information let's do that, on sure. that. Eyes Wide Shut, there was a pedophile scene. It wasn't just the, the adults. It wasn't just the hookers. Mm -hmm. And it got cut out. Did it? Yeah. He got, he, he died during editing. And then that 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 scene or those scenes it disappeared out of the final cut. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, Kubrick was trying to tell us something. Why I don't know, but he was certainly aware of babies and young children being sexually abused and murdered to bring in uh, demonic energies. Well, in these you know, we, we've we've heard some stuff about that over here as well because we had uh, a guy um, called Ian Watkins from the Lost Prophets. Uh, uh, pop group, pop group who uh, oh yeah, who's just been put away for that basically for um, sex with uh, babies actually not yeah I know. Children, you know oh it's disgusting I know I I did read about that yeah that's just insane and that's one guy that got caught or one guy they hung out to dry exactly so they didn't get behind him because he probably didn't have ties directly or didn't have any real power other than he was a quasi celebrity rock star guy yeah right exactly I mean. I'm, I really hope that they, they reveal what's been going on with the, the members of parliament because if people can see how disgusting some of these people are then maybe they'll lose some of the trust they have for um, power which people over here, they, a lot of people still really respect their um, politicians which I can never quite understand. People here still, still like the royal family. Ah, because they're bombarded constantly with media saying how amazing these people are. You know, they've got a whole agency that looks after the PR for Absolutely. the whole family. I mean, the more I, I, I cannot understand how people can think it's a good idea that a family, just through their bloodline, can get all the money in the world and all the houses they need and don't have to work, you know. It's just unbelievable that the people have been sold this idea. And if you ask 80% of people in England, um, they'll say they're great. They're bringing a lot of money oh. for tourism. That's all they ever say. Yeah, that's just terrible. I know there's a, a British actor called Simon McCorkindale that's now dead. Um, don't want to say anything too bad about him, but he hated my guts, and I did not like him at all. Mm. And he says some things to me in private about his elitist attitude about all things, and uh, it was really, really disturbing. And his his wife Susan George used to date Prince Charles, so that could be part of my problem as well. You just never know. Yeah, but, yeah um, you never know, do you? Th their attitude was what was appalling and shocking to me, and yet you know publicly, he, uh, you know they these people um, these people publicly uh, they go to church, you know, and they give uh, they have uh, you know their their orphanages and their their charities and you know it's a great big lie smokescreen well Terrible. jimmy jimmy savile had his charities and his orphanages of course. But now we find out you know it wasn't quite charity was it really boy the average person is just and i include myself in this we're just gullible because we're not, i don't know i have a theory that if we're spirits and then we come into this world we're not really when we're spirits when before we we inhabit these human bodies. I don't think we're schooled on deception, lying, and cheating. So a lot of us come in here and we're like, "Whoa, hey, what's going on? Yeah, this is crazy." And it seems and now uh, we're seeing really how crazy it is. It seems if you lie and you cheat, you actually do get further in this particular society. You know? Sociopaths, it's a common. I didn't know this. Some a friend of mine's going to a girl. A girl I know is going to. Um, University and she's um, going to be a psychologist and she's they study sociopaths and she did a paper on soci you know, sociopaths and she researched it pretty extensively and it, it's it's well known inside of that community that oh yes well intelligent sociopaths um, you know seventy five eighty percent of of the corporations and governments are run by sociopaths. That makes a lot of sense. Really, <laughs> it really does make. Doesn't a lot of sense. it make sense? Oh, well, you know, because uh, if you, if you think of um, some of your friends who you know you know are decent people, and you, if you replaced the world leaders with with people you know and you've met who are decent people, you know this world would be in a much better state than it's in at the moment. 
Yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. I guess we'll have to figure that out the next time we talk. Definitely. We have to come up with a solution for, for it's one thing to talk about all the ills of the world, but if we're not in a problem solving mode, we just continue spinning our wheels and, and, and there has to be, you know, there's got to be a solution, man. I, I, I want to believe it's when more and more people, uh, you know, come to their senses, but, uh, that, that's been, that's growing a little bit old because it seems to be a real division of, okay, the people that are willing to go there and then the rest of the population, which won't. So there's about 5% of us that are willing to go there, and then the rest just won't. And they've decided that, and they're firmly, they got their, their feet entrenched in the concrete. They're not moving. You know, they're not going to look around. They're not going to question. Jimmy Samuel was just one guy that did some bad stuff, and that's it. That's the thing. I mean, I think part of the solution, I don't know the, uh, the complete solution, but part of the solution is we need to get control of that powerful force, which is the media somehow. We need to get more, yeah. and, more, more and more people into it, you know? Mm. Easier said than done, right? Yeah. But um, I, agree, I tried. I agree with you. Though. Next time we talk, let's talk about um, Kubrick and. Uh, oh, I love it. Let's I love talk Kubrick. about uh, the media. Let's talk about solutions as well. Let's I don't think Kubrick was completely. Um, well, he wasn't naive, but he also he'd gone along with things to a certain extent, and then I think he had some kind of major um, cathartic epiphany or revelation or something where he felt compelled to do something. That's my theory on, on Kubrick. But I think he was an absolute genius. Yeah, I'm going to do... Um, I mean, I know, I know a bit about Stanley Kubrick and, Kubrick and some of his uh, films, but before we, meet, we talk next time, I'm going to do a bit of research on him. So, um, yeah, and there's a guy over in England. He's a friend of Dr. Judy Woods, who I, who I know. I'm trying to think of his name, something Johnson, but he's English, mm. and he's kind of an authority on Kubrick, and I'll try to remember his name and let you know. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining thank us. Thank you so much. I'm really glad. I'm th thanks. I was, I was cranky today, and I, and I wasn't in the mood, and then I thought, you know what, let's just do it. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks for doing that at short notice anyway, and um, it's been nice chatting to you, and definitely want to talk to you again, you know? Great. Thanks a lot, man. I yeah. really appreciate it. Take it easy. Okay, we'll talk soon. Have a good day, yeah? Yeah, thanks. Bye. So thanks for Stephen uh, for joining us. We really appreciated that. I hope he's going to come back, and uh, we're going to talk about some other topics next time he comes back. Um, I'm going to wind up this episode. Uh, remember, blind belief in authority is the greatest enemy of truth, as said Albert Einstein. Um, I've, added, I've added a donations button to the About section on the YouTube channel. Feel free to support Truth Sentinel. Uh, people who donate over £30 at some point in the future will going to be, are going to be sent a um, Truth Sentinel t-shirt. That's, uh, that's a work in progress, so it's probably going to be... could be three, three to four months before I get those t-shirts on the go. But anyway, if you feel like uh, donated anything, however small, go to that, click on the button. Thanks for that, if you do. Um, also, what I wanted to say was if you'd like to leave any comments um, or you'd like to email, email us about anything, if, you'd like, if you're listening and you'd like to come on as a guest uh, because you're an authority on a topic or you just want to come on and say hello and give your opinion about some of the things you've heard on the show, um, please email scottsentinel9 at gmail.com. Um, and I just wanted to say have a nice week. Um, just to quickly say sorry, topics coming up in future episodes could be whistleblowers. Um, we may uh, have be speaking to an MI5 agent, an ex-MI5 agent soon. Um, honor killings, we're hoping to speak to someone about that to explain the whole uh, mentality behind honor killings. Time travel, uh, also the Dyatlov Pass incident, that very strange incident that happened in the Russian Ural Mountains. Religious cults, I think we're going to address that topic at some point. Parallel universes, the control of scientific fact, I think that needs discussion at some point. But also, if you've got any topics you want us to discuss, just remember to leave it in the comments section or give us a, a contact us on the email again, scottsentinel9 at gmail.com. Um, thanks again for listening, really appreciate your support. Um, if you hear one show that you don't like, listen to another one. 
or just hang on there and we'll you know we'll uh, have some shows that maybe appeal more to you because we're trying to um, give a variety of topics thanks again for listening catch you later